Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 364. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. I'm flying solo this week again. You know, th- th- that seems to get repetitive. You know, I'm I'm going to stop saying that for now. Uh, it seems to be the trend that I'll be recording solo. So yeah, that's to be expected. If something new develops, then I'll bring it up. But let's hop into the news. So in first news is... Jim Miller reveals how today's episode came together with the Oswald family. <coughs> so, um, when they say today's episode is actually last week's episode, uh, what was it called again? I, I forgot. Uh, well, what was that episode called again? Ah, no, no. <coughs> so, anyway, um, here, uh, Big Jim, he explain how the whole thing happened and i say it's worth a read if you're interested in the story but i'm gonna summarize it to you guys and long story short when they had um Patton oswald was it yeah okay when he had him on uh oswald kind of asked like uh do you think my daughter could be in the show in some small shape or form like a background character something like that (coughs) sorry (coughs) <coughs> and um, the guy says we'll, we'll try and see what you can do And They couldn't So A few years later I think what In 2017 Yeah Back in August 2017 uh, They wanted to bring um, Some of the previous guests back For the season 9 finale Just to make it big From what I heard Where else gonna be in there too But anywho um, The guys there they discuss and they say we want Quibble Pants back, so that means Patton Oswalt. So, hey, Patton Oswalt wanted his daughter to come on. Why not we try integrate it? It's something like that. Like, I mean, that could be fun. <coughs> and um, it kind of boiled up into this whole thing where Big Jim remember a skit that Patton used to do before, where you got a nerdy dad who had a kid who was kind of a jock and. The kid was making fun of the dad and stuff. And uh, from that point on, they kind of rolled through with the joke and stuff. And they got this. So they kind of got the whole family involved from Patton Oswalt to the wife and to the kids. And hence the episode. And it was pretty cool. Uh, the whole, what do you call this, tweet is in the show notes. So you can read it out for yourself. I'm just summarizing it because longness and stuff. So, long story short, they got everyone together. They uh, recorded it and it was a really fun episode. Um, Personally for me, I kind of like it. There's a few things that I I just saw once. So I'm running off memory. And I I think it was a good episode. Um, A few nitpicks here and there. But (coughs) it's, it's just a normal pony episode, right? So, anywho, I do hope that the family enjoys the experience and I do hope that Alice goes up to be a voice actor or a really awesome actor. <coughs> so, anyway, let's head into the second news. And second news, Discovery Family press release confirmed June 22nd for mid-season hiatus with Rainbow Road Trip special on June 29th. Ooh. So, uh, what can I say? A season hiatus in the horizon is not bad because we get the chance to take a breather, um, soak in the moment, and kind of do other stuff for, you know, just to relax and catch up on old stuff or new stuff. (coughs) Personally for me, I find it okay because... It'll get us to catch up with some of the reviews that need to be done. Yes. So, um, there's a blurb here on, um, I don't know, somewhere. (laughs) But I'm just going to say on EQD. And the blurb says, the main six, no, sorry, no, that's the Rainbow Road Trip synopsis. Nah, I'm not going to read that. But... Yeah, so mid-season hiatus on the 22nd of June, so that's kind of okay. So that means we have time to relax and stuff until the second half begins. 
I don't mind um, if you ask me what my opinion on mid-season hiatus like this. It's kind of okay because we get the first 12 or 13 episodes up front for us to watch and enjoy. And we get to, you know, discuss, review, uh, fan arts and whatnot. And then when when there's huge vacation gaps in between, we, we get to do other things than ponies. We get to watch shows like Game of Thrones with Starbucks. Or maybe we get to watch some animes and stuff. Maybe play video games. If you're not the indoor type of person, you can go out and do stuff. So that gap in between there, I, I say it's a nice break for us to take a breather and stuff. Now, on the, what you call this, um, 29th of June, we're going to get a special or a movie. I don't know what the word is. Uh, I would say movie, but not really, I think. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> the way here, or what it says here, that uh, there's going to be a pony, quote-unquote, movie in the style of uh, the movie in Toon Boom. And this is My Little Pony Rainbow Road Trip. Uh, there's a synopsis there if you're going to go read it. I personally want to keep a distance from it. So I go in blind and blank. So that way I don't really know what's going on. So I'll be surprised. So what else? Um, uh, that's it, I guess. I mean, meet season hiatus, follow up very special. So it's not that bad. Then uh, we get to do whatever we want. Yes. So anyway, next news and last one is CBS News goes on an attack about lack of diversity and solving problems with magic in Friendship is Magic. So, mm, hmm, hmm. <clears throat> so this one is a touchy subject. <clears> hmm. <throat> uh, I'm just going to read the blurb that Sophisto wrote down here and a recent CBS News video has popped up going over the lack of diversity in cartoons for kids these days. A pony, that's right, and pony is one of the ones called out. It's so, it also attacks for its lacks of episodes about solving things with science and reason rather than magic. Though I think most of us know we've had plenty of both. Those are Sevisto words, not mine. <clears throat> and yeah, um, it's an interesting video. It's an interesting video. Um, I'm not going to go play it here and stuff. I'm just going to talk to you about it. And I'm going to go full webcam on this. So, uh, how do I put this? Di diversity is kind of a hot topic button nowadays. Because, how do I want to put this? Because you have um, your characters being the atypical white boy, blonde hair, blue eyes, whatever it is, kind of uh, Billy Jimmy character and stuff. I mean, it's all safe. And then you have your brunette character. I mean, it's all, it's all safe in the sense of we just create these characters because we know this is what sells or this is what is safe. Then if you go on a safer route or a alternate route, you can have the guy with a black friend, which has been done a lot of times. For example, you have what um, Danny Phantom. Danny is hmm, has black hair. What do you guys call it? I don't know. <coughs> but anywho, um, he has his friend, I forgot his name, and the girl and so on. I mean, it's a safe formula. And then if you go to Kim Possible, uh, both of the Caucasians and whatnot, and so on. But the thing is, how do you do a show that is going to bring in money for the people who are making it or the company or the corporation and still make it a big success? And also nowadays, not to piss off people. Thing is, <coughs> if you create a show with diversity in mind, some people might call it as a cash grab or a look, we're just doing this because this is what 
is popular and whatnot. You're not really sincere in what you're doing. Maybe you are, but at the end of the day is how much money are you raking up? I, for one, don't really agree on that statement, but it's kind of there and proven because whenever you see shows, it always goes back to the safe formula where you have uh, quote-unquote American kids or Western kids doing stuff and stuff. It's rarely that they introduce Asians or Africans and whatever it is in the betweens. <coughs> and I, for one, who am Asian and live in Malaysia, am kind of desensitized by this. Because whenever I watch cartoon shows or even movies or shows, TV shows in general, most of them are foreigners, Caucasians for me. Like, I see this one guy, he looks black, and guess what? We don't have black people in Malaysia. So, to us, that's a rarity. And to say diversity? I don't know. When, when you talk about shows that I watch, we don't have them here. To us, they're a rarity. So, having a white guy and a black guy in front of the TV screen is kind of the norm now. So, maybe you'll have the argument with me where you're Asian. Aren't you happy about seeing an Asian guy on screen? Yes, I can say that. But at the same time too, does it really matter? Because if that person is playing a character, he should be whatever the director needs him to be. <coughs> and yes, if the person... Oh, sorry. If the role he needs to be is Chinese, then he's being played by a Chinese guy. That makes sense. But <laughs> um, servant expectations. So if he needs to be Chinese, but you put a white guy there and he knows how to speak Chinese, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's out of blue. No, Nobody sees that coming. Yep. Yeah. But no, um, that's besides the point. Uh, the point is, yes, diversity, diversity is cool and all, and... We kind of need it nowadays because, hey, it's not all about the white guy and the black guy or whatever it is. We really need more characters. So, yeah, why not, right? <coughs> and as for them calling out ponies for solving things with magic, it's clearly that they not seen most of the episodes. You and me know that, yes, magic is a core component to the show, but it has been told to us that magic is not the end all be all. Most of the time, uh, some of the problems that were solved is by talking it out. Magic does help. I mean, uh, for example, what season seven when they helped Stygian out, it was mostly talking, and then they blast the evil spirity shadow thing away. I mean, that thing is pure evil. So how? Would you talk it down? I mean, <laughs> besides the point of getting Stygian back by talking him and pulling out of the shadow creature thing, how would you deal with the shadow thing? I mean, see, here's the thing. They have a narrative, they've done it, and it works for them. So having something like the shadow, th the shadow creature is the evil that they need to defeat. Uh, unfortunately, they have to defeat it via magic, so can't do much. <coughs> but if you really look at it, they talk Stygian. They have Starlight talk to Twilight about, is this the right thing to do? Because I don't feel it is. And I think you should search your feelings, know it to be true. And in the end, Twilight, the Princess Friendship, knew that Helping Stygian would solve the problem. So, that is the conflict there. Now, is the big budget finale where everybody blasts the shadow creature with magic. Yes. <coughs> so, science? I, I don't know. I mean, it's proven that science does exist in this universe. And, I, I, I don't know, man. Reasoning. This is part of reasoning, yeah. Like I said, I'm talking to Stygian and stuff. And now... Starswell and Stygian are on good terms. 
And there's a lot of other episodes that do all these things, but I don't really remember which one. So to call police out on that, that's not right. You're you're lacking on your information there, buddy. <sighs> but in the end, we here as fans knows that they're wrong, and the show does have diversity. Would I say that? It could involve more, kind of. I mean, what the CBS host wants to do is get a lot of diversity, mix it up, having male, female, and whatnot. I mean, in this season eight and going forward, we do see a lot of that. We did see yaks, hippogriffs, griffins, and also changelings. So that's a sign of the diversity that it's been injected in the show. Granted, I do wish that they have done it earlier, but beggars can beggars can be choosers. And mm, I don't know. I mean, <coughs> the show has its goals and stuff. So yeah, if 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 it wants to be a show that aims at girls first, that's Hasbro's deal to do with it. We here just consume product, but who knows? Uh, maybe you, we can take this as an example going forward when we go for other shows. Maybe like uh, I don't know the next whatever is going to happening, because they did mention Sixteen um, Hudson is a show that has this diversity with the director stating that this is what they want, <coughs> and yeah. Probably, maybe maybe going forward we'll get that. Maybe going forward we'll get more diversity. We'll we'll get more of a lead like um, a Chinese character. So I'm um, talking about Chinese characters. I uh, remember Jake Long, the American Dragon. He's Chinese, so that's something, right? And the Proud Family. Remember that? A uh, cast full of African Americans. So yeah, that's something. And if you're growing up with the Disney Channel, there's So Raven, so that's one of show. <coughs> so I mean, diversity is there. It's just that show quality. No matter what you put in front of us, the audience, what we would want is good quality. No matter the diversity, if you want to have a story with, for example, a guy in a wheelchair or a girl in a wheelchair. How would you present it to us, and how does it? How, how do you present it to us that makes sense of the situation? Because you can't just put stuff in because you want to put stuff in, and uh, it's one of those things where don't do things just because you want to do things. Do things because they make sense. Uh, okay, so that's my rant over with. And anywho, <coughs> let's hop on to my next topic. What have I been doing for my week? And funny enough, uh, my week has been pretty okay. Um, I'm still recovering from this cough. As you can tell, I've been coughing a bit, and I think my throat is kind of recovering. So that's okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, beyond that, um, yes, this week. Uh, this week I've seen. Pokemon movie. Let's no no the Pokemon movie Detective Pikachu, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. <coughs> so okay, I uh, went there alone, um, which is rare. I I don't usually watch movie alone. So yeah, um, I, I I did watch it alone, and I had a lot of fun. Here's the thing. Um, it's not like hmm. Okay, watching Pokemon movies, the one that I seen, has been really has been really interesting. Um, most of them, starring Ash and Pikachu, and the the Swan TV special with starring Red. But this one here, is kind of interesting. Where you have a live action, I think it's based on the Detective Pikachu, King. Yeah, but 
uh, how do I want? <coughs> hmm, hmm, hmm. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, looking at the Pikachu, sorry, <laughs> looking at the Pokemon in real life and how they animate it is really cool. And they show you that this world is plausible. Um, they set it up like this town, I, I forgot the name, has uh, humans and Pokemon living with each other, integrating into the same city or the same um, world. So for every human, there's a Pokemon partner. <coughs> so uh, there's this one girl, I forgot her name. Uh, she has a Psyduck. Or this is one bad guy character and his Pokemon partner is a Charizard and stuff. So you you have that there, um, them doing the integration and stuff, and it's really cool. And the main character, Sam was it? Or Tim? I forgot. He doesn't really um, care so much about the Pokemons because when he was a young and um, his dad cared more about his work rather than his family and stuff. So he doesn't really want a Pokemon and stuff. So yeah. Um, that's all my overall synopsis. But <laughs> it's, I, I'm trying to go into it, not really spoiling it. But um, in the end, um, would I say... Sorry, in the end, would I recommend it? Yeah, I, I say yeah. Go watch it. Go go. Just go watch it for the experience of watching Pikachu talk with Ryan Reynolds' voice. And you would think that oh, that's just dumb and stupid. No, 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 no. They make it. They they somehow make it work, and you are not. You don't see Ryan Reynolds. You see Pikachu talking, and you would think that, oh, uh, he, uh, the Pikachu would have the cute, um, pitchy voice, but nah, man, it's Ryan Reynolds and stuff. But it works. It somehow works. And I would recommend it. Like, just go and watch. It's a lot of fun. <coughs> so, anywho, that's been my week. Um, next week, probably, I'll go watch John Wick 3. That's going to be cool if you've been following that series. And if there's any more movie news, I'll be letting you guys know. Oh, on a side note, uh, I did play Dark Souls 2 and finish it. And now I'm on Dark Souls 3. And I'm almost finished. So that's cool. Uh, if you're wondering what happened to Resident Evil 2 Remake, I have not finished that one at all. Like I, I've been procrastinating. <laughs> Let's just say that I've got sidetracked <laughs> uh, yes but anywho if you have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at the com. you can also reach us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at show, and my personal twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. also please subscribe in radios on iTunes YouTube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page and also catch us on com. links are in the show notes also do review <laughs> also do catch us on iTunes and Stitch Radio for the review and discussion podcast. Over there you'll catch me, Silver Quills, have Heart Song and also the Terra reviewing pony episodes, comics, movies and also other shows. One of the shows that we did before was the Pokemon movie, the third one. Stariente. <coughs> so yay, so that's something to check out, right? And who knows? If all of us seen Pokemon 3 sorry if all of us seen the Pokemon movie we might do a special discussion I, I don't know I mean it's up there in the clouds so I might ask them if they're interested and if you guys at home are interested in it if you want us to review it in the comment section down here just say we would like you guys to review the Detective Pokemon sorry, Detective Pikachu movie so yeah, um, I'll gauge that and I'll just bring it up to the guys and see if we want to do it or not. <coughs> so, anywho, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's other day access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. 
talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master, <laughs> and also Master of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. <laughs>